Ladies and gentlemen, this just gets better and better. January and February of 2020, we had Democrats trying to remove, not just impeach, because the House already impeached President Trump. We have Democrats trying to remove Trump from office weeks before one of the greatest calamities we've faced as a country, okay? Then they say, well, we knew about it. Well, then why didn't you talk about it? Why didn't you inform anyone? And then they say, um, well, the intelligence community told Trump. Well, then why didn't the intelligence community, A, tell the American people, and B, leak the information like they did with the Steele dossier that was purchased by Clinton, who will eventually be the nominee in 2020 and lose to Trump again. It'll be the biggest political call of all time by me. But anyway, then they said, well, um, Trump was too slow to react. He actually was not too slow. Everything that he did from banning uh, travel to uh, task force to everything, Democrats said, oh, well, how could you do that? That's really horrible. Then Andrew Cuomo, who is being championed as America's governor, his state of the state, go to the state of the state addresses for Andrew Cuomo, for Gavin Newsom in February, just weeks before he shut down the entire state along with Cuomo. 20% of U.S. GDP in California and New York. 60 million to people total. And they shut down 20% of the American U.S. economy, U.S. GDP. W weeks prior to both states being closed for business, they had their budgets for the year and they had, the, they had their state of the state addresses. Not one mention of masks or ventilators, especially in New York. Try to go back in time two months. See who was saying what. And Andrew Cuomo said nothing in January about masks, ventilators, a healthcare crisis, anything. Then President Trump says, hey, you know what? Uh, there's chloroquine, hydrochloroquine. Um, uh, certain scientists in Europe um, or France, there was, there was some good news regarding it. Oh, well, you know what? Um... Don't believe the hype. Don't believe the hype. There's no hope. And things are going to get a million times worse. And you're talking about people in the millions uh, perishing and, and there's no hope. And then you're saying, then they said, well, um, you know, Trump, here he goes again. He doesn't know what he's talking about. There's no, th that's not a proven treatment. Well, now the New York Times, check out my segment prior to this, the New York Times is saying in the latest headline, uh, malaria drug helps uh, patients approve in small study. And then actually gives credit to President Trump later down in the article, saying, oh yeah, well, Trump touted, Trump touted this, and this is, you know, the first, um, the first study that, you know, um, Backs enthusiast previous reports from China and France that the drug seemed to help patients, along with enthusiastic comments from the President Trump, have created a buzz around hydrochloroquine uh, and the closely related chloroquine, which are decades old drugs used to treat malaria. Also, the, again, this none of this is a none of this is advice on uh, any medical issue. None of this is advice on any. Uh, none of this is advice on the current crisis from a medical perspective, okay. But now you have hydrochloroquine. Aus Australian government waives regulatory requirements for drug. This is the Guardian. Several antiviral and anti-malarial drugs, which have also been touted by U.S. President as a treatment for the crisis, have been exempted from strict strict approval regime. Trump touted hydrochloroquine uh, as okay. Then right underneath, he didn't. T he, this is the headline that's the usual usual nonsense from not only the Guardian but but from CNN, MSNBC. The, Trump touted hydrochloroquine as a cure for co no. He didn't. He didn't say a cure. He didn't say a cure. He said treatment. And don't believe the hype. Well, this is hilarious. The Australian government now is waiving the regulatory requirements. If it helps 
some people or most people or a certain number of people, then what's the problem? Petulant, malicious, angry, maniacal, rabid, frothing at the mouth, disgruntled, miserable media. What is the problem? What's the problem? Tell me what the problem is. If this is, even the New York Times said it's a relatively safe medication, relatively safe drug. So then what is the problem? You're dealing with a global crisis and media is so petulant. They're like, oh, don't trust, don't trust President Trump. He was right. He was right. He never said that there is no cure for this, just like there's no cure for the common cold. This is, the, this is, don't get me started, but here, on Thursday, hydrochloroquine and chloroquine was exempted from requirement, to be, from, from requirement to be listed on the Australian Register of Therapeutic Goods, which is generally the only way medicine can be lawfully supplied in Australia. Good. If the wonderful experts that failed to predict any of this, if the wonderful, amazing experts had, um, and the FDA also fast-tracked this also, if the wonderful experts had focused on treatment, they said, oh, vaccine takes a year and a half, uh. okay, treatment, treatment for this, how do you lessen the fever, how do you do these, how do you, um, you know, ensure that, God forbid, a sore throat doesn't get infinitely worse. Well, that maybe there's, you know, you have to, again, this is not advice. I am not giving advice, not advice. This is not medical advice. I am not giving medical advice. What I'm saying is, if you know that, that antibiotics are important when also... Even if this is a virus, uh, they, they talked about in 1918, there was an article that it was bacteria also that was like the big, big, one of the biggest issues. Because if your immune system is weakened from uh, one organism, it might be vulnerable to another organism. So there's not, not and, and not everyone has the same immune system. So again, this is not, not, um, this is not, Medical advice. What I'm saying is what President Trump was able to do and what he's continuing to do, and he's, he's actually one of the great, he will be viewed as one of the great presidents we've ever had. History will be very kind to Trump. And the same people who had derangement issues, who uh, broke up friendships and, and family bonds and all of this because they could not stand the fact that they lost to Trump two elections in a row. Okay, it's not going to be Biden. It's going to be Hillary Clinton who will be nominee. I will have made the biggest political call of all time. In a, in a, in a bizarre fantasy world where Biden is the nominee, they don't win the popular vote, okay? The only lifeline they have to some credibility in their own minds, the only, like, you know, like taking the egg off their faces is... The fact that Biden, or the, that that they won the popular vote, which they knew they wouldn't matter. They they knew that they had to win the electoral college that's in the Constitution. Then, with everything, they say, "Oh, wait, we we lost the Supreme Court, packed the courts. We lost we lost the electoral college. Uh, you know, uh, abolish the electoral college." They just want to rewrite the Constitution. Literally, just take you know a pen and just cross out things they don't like. Because they can't play by the rules. They cheat all the time. Ask Bernie Sanders. Actually, don't ask him. Oh, ask me what? Did they cheat you, Bernie? I don't know. It's just so convoluted. Uh, the Russians, though, did uh, hack the DNC to inform the country that something happened with me. Well, what happened with you, Bernie? Ah, Biden's a good friend of mine. Thanks for, thanks for playing, Bernie. Thanks for funneling all the votes back into the Democratic Party. If you really cared about this, you know, fighting the 1%, you'd join the Green Party. And this is coming. I'm a Trump supporter, so I don't care what the left does. 
The only chance anyone has at Medicare for All, which, by the way, Democrats do not want, it's not feasible, number one, there's $6,700 out-of-pocket costs for Medicare, by the way, uh, depending on the plan. That's, that's, that's the most expensive plan. There are different Medicare plans. Medicare is not all free. The vast majority of Medicare for All uh, advocates are, like, under 30 or in their 30s, and they don't realize that um, people who are on Medicare – uh, have out-of-pocket costs. It's not just free, okay? If you don't have 3000 or $6,700 a year, then it's going to be very tough on you. But anyway, they're not going to go... I, I, as always, I'm going to just veer back into this. All of this, the media coverage pertaining to President Trump and this crisis, all of this, is to denigrate, insult, mock, demean, undermine President Trump. Not to help Biden. It's to help Hillary Clinton. She's going to be the nominee. She was always going to be the nominee. I will have made the biggest political call of all time. Clinton is the only person that gives them a chance, trying to tell everybody the reality of what's taking place. If Biden were the nominee, for example... With everything that he said and done, which is like a hilarious comedy routine at this point, and you have allegations that are hor horrendous and horrific, that, by the way, just prove how duplicitous and disingenuous the left is. If it was, look at what, you compare Kavanaugh to what happened with Biden. Kavanaugh, something happened 30, 40 years ago, uh, no location, no time, no witnesses, no nothing. You, know, you can't have him as, on the Supreme Court. This is a, an allegation against Biden. Specific time, location, person can give details. And it wasn't like the, the assault was far greater. Far greater and more egregious. And, and, and liberals, and you're talking even people who are writing... In very liberal publications that I used to write, they're like, well, you know, these are the facts. Let's talk about the facts. Uh, okay. <laughs> when Clinton loses again, that whole rotten, liberal, left-leaning, progressive, whatever that word means, and there are a lot of good people there, but that whole left-leaning, nauseating, rotting, movement that is a giant bowel movement will just go down the drain along with uh, the entire Democratic Party. But anyway, politically that is. If, if Biden is the nominee, imagine, okay, not only would they lose so miserably because they're going to lose with Clinton, but if Biden is the nominee, the reaction, the, the maniacal response from Democrats, imagine if you were in like a desert and you were thirsting for water and you just you just were in the desert and you were about to go out and, you know, you just, you couldn't stand it any longer and you had maybe a couple moments to live and there was like this little, you, you saw a little spring with water coming out and you, oh my God, and you, you picked up the water and you put it on your face and you started sipping the water and actually it was an illusion it was a mirage and you were really touching a cactus and all the needles were just you know and you were like ah that that feeling <laughs> that that feeling that that reality that reaction multiply that times 30,000 that's what they would feel on election night if Biden were to run and well eventually 100% lose to President Trump in the most miserable fashion, in the most epic, monumental fashion. They're not going with Biden. He wouldn't even get the popular vote. I'm just going to repeat this, the last part of this seg segment, like hundreds of times before November, like I've done thousands of times since 2017. Everything must be taken within the paradigm. Now, just, you know, just I'm going to be proud of this philosophy or mentality every everything must be taken within the paradigm of 
Why are Democrats acting this way? That's, this is not this is not democratic politics prior to the 90s. It's not. The Clintons changed everything. This isn't even really American politics. It, 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 American politics has always been nasty. The Clintons helped elevate it to a very, very, very surreal place. Okay. You have to ask yourself why are they why are they treating President Trump even in the midst of a crisis in such a manner? Why are they why why can't they give him, give him a break? Why can't they just give him a, a second, a day where they don't disparage him? It's because they have to make everything morally relative. And now you have Australia. Now you have uh, hydroxychloroquine, Australian government waives regulatory requirements. So they, they were always like, oh, well, you know what? Don't believe the hype. Don't believe the hype. It's like, no, if it helps some people, you have to waive the regulations, obviously, because when you are experiencing such suffering, you want to try you want to try some treatment to alleviate the pain. Okay, but Democrats don't really understand this because their lives are 24-7 um, disgruntled, you know, frustrated, angry. That, that's, that's on a good day. That's on a good day. That's just that's how they live life since Trump was in office. I go ah, every day, every day. And the therapy session is just getting retweeted by people who agree with you and say, I don't have Twitter. I don't have Facebook. But um, anyway, give me your thoughts below. Several antiviral and anti-malarial drugs, which have also been touted by U.S. president as a treatment, have been exempted from strict approval reg regime. Thank you, Australia. And thank you, President Trump. And let me, let me tell you something. We're going to get through this as a country. The world is going to get through this as a world. We will remember the people who, uh, the pundits, the, the, the petulant, sad um, naysayers and critics of a president who's tr who actually led us through all of this, in in the height at the height of this crisis, he had like 55, 60 percent approval rating. Now Politico's like, oh, his approval rating went down. Well, what do you expect? There's six million jobs unemployed. Six million, sorry, six million uh, people unemployed. I mean, you know. You have Democratic governors, so shut it down, shut, it, shut everything down. You have some Republican governors too, but like mainly Democrats. And what do you expect? You, you shut down the global economy to, to address this, and you don't think the long-term consequences are going to be even more egregious or just as egregious or um, have some kind of unforeseen consequences that are just horrendous that, that might not have been the case had you not been so heavy-handed give me your thoughts below if you want to support my voice long term ladies and gentlemen my patreon is below check out and subscribe to a trey goodman's other channel right this second and ladies and gentlemen um and it, to my australian viewers god bless you and um we're we're all gonna get through this and we're all going to get through this and see President Trump win re-election over Hillary Clinton in November. Thank you so much, everyone.